When did you know that you were gay? Uh, my last girlfriend was when I was 17, so pretty late on. Oh, shit. Yeah. So you knew and then came yeah, out like right Yeah, I think away. I knew around her. Okay. So, yeah. Who was the hardest person it was to come out to? Um, If I hadn't have done it at 16, if we'd gone back with one counter because we got a bit cocky and we were like, oh, if they want me, then they want me. And they cast anyone else, I don't know where I'd be. I could, I could be. That's easily the biggest thing that's happened to me so far and why I was able to go to LA. Uh, we're here with our boy, Nick Hamilton, hey, who is a... Oh, shit, my bad. Who is a <laughs> child actor, adult actor, mm. singer, mm. songwriter, mm. Uh, home tender, mm. slash mixologist, <laughs> author. TikToker, author. There, the list goes so <laughs> yeah. deep. When we were doing our research, we were like, yo, what does this guy not do? Do you dance? No, I, that's not. That's probably the one thing I can't. Okay, good. Thank God. There's so many things <laughs> I can't do. But anyways, and we're about to go under the influence. Thanks for coming, Nick. Chin chin. Cheers. Hey, cheers. Yeah, the funny part is, is when we were doing our research, no. we're like, I mean, there's got to be one of the things that he's working on that he's not like that good at. Mm. And he was, the, the music, thing, yeah. the music is phenomenal. The last thing we listened to was uh, your music. We we're like driving to our friend's crib. And then I was like, put on, put on Nick Hamilton's song. So we picked, what was it like D something? Uh, different year. D yeah. yeah. Different year. And then we we're like, what the fuck is this? This Mate, is beautiful. That's so nice of you guys. Appreciate yeah. that. You, were, uh, you sounded a little bit like Khaled on the song On The Way. Oh, shit. You know hey, I mean? Yeah, I'll take that any yeah. day of the week. I mean, yeah. that's high praise. Yeah, Khaled absolutely. is a beautiful voice. Well, if you wanted to sound like somebody, or who would you collaborate on the music side? I've always wanted to work with uh, Lewis Capaldi. Like, oh. like, a, like a really strong like ballad. Yeah. But I'm about to do... Uh, I've got a movie coming out later this year that I wrote a song for uh -huh. that I'm performing. Uh, and um, it's an 80s track. Um for an, 80, for an 80s movie and we've got uh, we made it we wrote it and uh, the music supervisor was like uh, you know we should get like an 80s star and see if they like they can duet on it so we brainstormed some ideas the first person we reached out to was Belinda Carlisle from the Go-Go's she did uh, mm -hmm. Heaven is a Place on Earth mm -hmm. wow. uh, and she said yes what so, so we're doing we're duetting that together okay so just the one song right yes yeah, so it's okay. just, just uh, in the movie um, it's called Never Alone the movie's called Brave the Dark but uh -huh. it's uh it's like one of those things where the movie is kind of designed to like be nominated for stuff because it's like a mm. like an Oscar baity kind of movie. Uh -huh. um, you called it an Oscar baiter. Oscar baby. <laughs> it's like that's it's a like, word. Like, like a word. Baby. No, yeah, no, yeah, no. It's just like a classic, term. like emotional, like, yeah, a, like it's very fucking good. But um, the, when is this movie coming out? Uh, we, we're aiming for the festivals around the fall time. Okay. Uh, so like by the end of the year, it'll come out of twenty twenty two. When, nice. So when you're casting that movie and you're and you're lo reading the script, mm -hmm. are you also like, I could write a song for this? Like, how did you get to it's write something in it? No, it's never been like a thing. We uh, so my music producer, I was just talking to. We were gonna write some more songs together and uh, started talking about the movie. And um, he like realized how kind of prestige the movie is. And he was like, Look, if this is gonna get nominated for stuff, then there's not many good movies that have good original songs in them that are gonna get nominated for stuff. He was like. Uh, like this year, it's kind of packed with like Elvis and stuff coming up. But um, he was like, you're probably going to get a few nominations if the song's half decent in a good movie. But uh, with Elvis coming out, are those songs, cons they're not original, are dude, they? Dude, they have like a, a 12 artist, like CeeLo Green. Like, oh, uh, like, like they Cardi make songs B for the song movie? There. Like yeah, they're doing like, that they, now. They, they all wrote original songs for the movie in like the style of Elvis, I guess. Okay. So think about it. Like nowadays, what they're doing is they're having large artists do the original score. So they did that for Black Panther. There's original music. Spider-Man, the... the Multiverse one. Oh, yeah. Just exactly. original songs. It's That's the new, the yes. new Into the Spider-Verse you're talking Into about, right? Into the Spider-Verse. Yeah, yeah. Have you watched everything everywhere all at once? I do. I'm so excited. So again, one of those things that I've, I've heard so good. many good things about. Once you see that, you let me know if that's in your top three movies all time. Yeah? Because it is for me, yeah. Damn, okay. And it's been like that for, I think, almost everyone I know that's seen that movie. Mm, they damn. will say it's either the best, the best in a long time, mm -hmm. or like top three, top five all-time movies. Wow. What is What is your top three all-time? I have posters. You might have actually seen them when you went to my place. The uh -huh. posters behind my couch. Yeah, yeah. Uh, they're my top three movies of all time. I got the first one. I don't know if it's updated by this point, but it, the first uh, is Green Mile, Stephen King movie. Fucking Solid, phenomenal film. Solid. You've never seen Green Mile? You didn't no. flinch. No, I oh didn't. man, I didn't that one's incredible. Tom Hanks. Ugh. Have you seen Shawshank Redemption? I have, but it, like my memory on it's spotty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just one of those classics that you kind of yeah. have to. Yeah. Um, the Impossible is number two. It's the tsunami movie with young Tom Holland. It's phenomenal. What? Really good. I, I saw that. Heard of this? One of those things where I just can't stop gushing about a movie that no one really ever talks about, uh -huh. which is cool. Um, and then number three is the Truman Show, with uh, Jim Carrey. Solid. Mm. That's not a bad list, right? Yeah. You know, like starting acting as as young as you did. Mm. How did you escape being the prototypical child star? 
Uh, I don't know if it was as tough as I myself expected it to be. I think, um, so I started when I was 11 and I did short films up until I was 13, did my first movie where I played Nicole Kidman's son, mm-hmm. um, which is a crazy first movie to be a part of. And then uh, I did uh, my first US movie right after that and then kind of everything rolled from there. It was right after that. And What was uh, the first US movie? Uh, it's called Captain Fantastic. Okay. Played Viggo Mortensen's son. Uh, that's the only, yeah, that was good fun. Uh, uh, me and five other kids. Uh, just a, it's one of those movies that um, is really the closest I've gotten to like the awards circuit and very prestige. And uh, it should have done more than it did, but it's just a, a one of those movies that not really many people know about. And it's just phenomenal. Everyone who I've, I've met who has seen it and speaks very highly of it. But so, like, you're a kid and you're doing all these movies. Like, what's your regiment like? Are you exotic? Like, do you remember just loving it all? Or, like, yeah, what was the good and the bad? Yeah, I mean, the majority of it is pretty awesome. There's no, like, I think it's very easy once you have the privilege of being, like, looked after so well. Um, mm-hmm. That The moment that one small thing happens that's shitty, then you go, ah, oh, I can complain <laughs> about that for the rest of my life. Mm-hmm. Um but no, everything was just like really cool. I was with my mum for seven years of it. And then when I turned 18, I did uh, three movies in 2018 and then moved to the US right after. And uh, it was just like, I've kind of been chasing my dream since I was a kid. I haven't really had a bunch of uh, setbacks except for COVID. And I'm very extreme. I, I recognize my privilege for that. Um, but then like all the TikTok stuff, everything is, everything's just kind of going really well which is yeah nice. i was about to say dude it's like everything you you have like the midas touch where <laughs> the things you touch turn to gold yeah when, when did you luck. start music uh i've been doing music for a while i used to play drums in that kind of fantastic i played uh the cone the box drum yep um uh so i used to play drums i played drums for 10 years from when i was four to 14 and then stopped um and now i sing and play piano a little bit um but I released those first songs that you're talking about. Different Year was my first song, and I re- released that when I was 20, I think. Damn. Um, and, yeah, I mean, this, uh, since those that, that EP that I released that year, that this Never Alone through the movie is uh, the next movie, the next song to be released. So what, did, were you born being able to sing? Like, you always knew growing up you could no, sing? No, no, fuck no. I was awful. I, like, I was one of those kids who sung everything. And uh, everyone hated me. <laughs> I was like, uh, I, me and my friend Jordan Kirchin was uh, during primary school. We would put two earpods in each and put it, uh, put it on in his iPod. And we would just scream these songs, mostly John Mayer. Uh, Fire. In, in, yeah, thank you. In the, in, the, in the school bus. And just would, we thought we were sick. <laughs> we thought we were so cool. That's one thing too, I guess like I was a, a, a cocky dick. When I was a kid, and I think that all does come down to like possibly the acting. I but I had a you know I had a a good base grounding me, um, and it, but it was really only until I moved to the US, and I'm still kind of growing in that sense. But I like I was really full of myself, and I thought I was hot shit. And then I moved to LA, and everyone's hot shit. So yeah, well, what, when you came to LA, what was that moment where you didn't feel like hot shit? Because you at the end of the day, your career compared to people that have been in this game Mm. for double your time is still like if you quit tomorrow or yeah if you quit tomorrow your career is still better than like 95 percent of people pursuing acting i appreciate that maybe 99 yeah Yeah, so so what so what when you came to la made you go damn i'm not hot shit uh i guess it's kind of it's the people you surround yourself with it's less like uh you know, I still was doing stuff that uh, I really enjoyed doing and was doing fairly well in those fields. But it was like, started surrounding myself with people who had been doing this for a long time. I really, I, on the regular, get along better with with older people than I do younger people. Uh, like a lot of my LA friend group are in their 40s, uh, like stand-up comedians who have been doing this for years and years and years and years. And they have this uh, all this knowledge and, and wisdom that I don't think they know they have that I've I've leached off for for a few years now that um, the moment I started acting like I was cocky and hot shit, they brought me pretty down to size, <laughs> which is good. I need that. Yeah, yeah those are very good that. friends. Wow. Yeah, yeah. I've and, always needed that. And, that. and they were like that from as soon as you met them or like you, you know, after you were close? I guess you got to filter it out, right? you got to mm-hmm. have like, there's still, you know, people within uh, those friend groups that are going to kind of uh, say I'm awesome no matter what. And uh, 
sometimes that's nice. You know, sometimes that ni- that's nice to have that. Like, if you are feeling down, it's like, oh, I am pretty cool. Thank you for telling me. <laughs> um, but then I have, yeah. having the... <laughs> it would be nice. <laughs> I got to check you sometimes, right? Because you have too many people. This guy... <laughs> What's, do you guys know of the like the 33, 33, 33, 33% rule? No. It's like 33% of your time is spent with people that are like out of your league that make mm. you feel inadequate. Or like, you know, you look up to yeah, them yeah. and they're way further ahead of you in life. 33% are people on your level. Mm. And then 33% are people that like you're kind of teaching or raising up. Huh. Yeah, I don't know if I what's the What's the 1%? That's left. Because <laughs> that's a 99%. With, hang out with yourself. Yeah, yeah, that's you. Alone. That's you. That's when yeah. you sleep. Yeah. <laughs> Especially with, you know, the, the, the high bar you set for yourself in so many different avenues. Do you, uh, are you, do you feel like you're constantly chasing or, or do you find moments of satisfaction? Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know who I heard say that in an interview once that uh, you can't just be chasing, right? You have to have those moments of uh, celebration of you get a job and it can't just be like, all right, when I'm going, when am I going to go do the job? And then when we wrap, I'll celebrate, but then you don't cause you're waiting on the next job. Then it's just kind of a constant cycle. Um, like finishing, like working on this book, I, uh, started writing the book and I was very excited about it. it got really stressful in the middle, finished it. I was like, you have to take that time of celebration rather than just handing it in and going, okay, now we need a publisher and then we need a release date and then I need people to buy it. It's just, it's this constant, kind of cycle that you get stuck in um, that I think I'd like to think that I kind of have that figured out at least a little bit to, uh, to t- take a step back. And my boyfriend really helps me with that too. Now he's, he's very much in the moment than I, uh, a lot more than I am. Um, I'm always kind of constantly looking forward and he does stop me a lot during the day and uh, cause he's not in the, in the industry and that's really helpful. It's just like uh, something cool happens and I just kind of move on. He's like, that's, that's really cool. You just know that just, Understand that that's a really cool thing to just yeah, happen. That this is not a normal occurrence. Exactly. Yeah, you yeah. should be happy about this. Yeah, like a thousand things uh-huh. don't need to happen during the day yeah. to f- make yourself feel good. Mm-hmm. Like uh, one awesome thing should be enough. Mm-hmm. You know. Is this your first serious relationship? Uh, no, I was. Uh, I'd say the first adult serious relationship. I was with a, another guy for a year when I first moved to out to LA, which is probably one of the reasons why it took me a while once I moved out to LA to become that kind of fully formed version of myself because I moved out to LA my whole mantra was like oh I'm independent I'm a, I'm a big man I'm an adult now I'm gonna have my own apartment I'm gonna do whatever I want and then I get in a relationship with this guy from Utah uh-huh. oh so he didn't move from Australia with you no That's what no so he was like a, this long distance relationship for a year where I was going out to Utah every second weekend and wait how'd you meet Utah man uh, Raya Raya yeah, okay Raya, Raya was uh, him and then mm-hmm. uh, he his sister lived in LA so he was out in LA for a little bit and we met there okay uh, but that was yeah just a year of just kind of not putting myself first uh, and not finding, like gathering a, a community in LA. Like I realized once we broke up and COVID had just started when we broke up, I was like, I kind of have no friends. <laughs> <laughs> I have no one to even talk to or call. And then I like, I gathered this community that I have now and then uh, moved back to Australia for a little bit in 2021, came back here, uh, then moved to New York. Uh-huh. And then uh, I've been there for the last uh, seven months and that's where I met Jackson. So, have you, have you ever been in like a toxic relationship? I mean, I wouldn't, I, I, it's the closest to a toxic was that one. I've been mm. in a few uh, regular relationships that have been awesome and helped me grow as a person, but I think uh, the closest that has gotten to toxic was that one. But no, I mean, we loved each other. It was, it was amicable and like, uh, do we talk at all now? No. <laughs> <laughs> but. Uh, was that one of I, the ones you like block each other after or? Kind of. It was just like, we just won't ever chat again. Um, but it's like, I'm, I'm very happy now. And I think. By serious relationship too, I think I've been with Jackson for just over four months now and I have as much, if not more, faith in that than I had in the Utah guy way further in. So mm. um, It's funny how that works. Like a time really means nothing when nothing. it comes to relationships. No, I mean, yeah. I felt like I, I keep saying four months came by. I was like, it's ridiculous. It feels like we've known each other for two, three years. Yeah. Like, um, no, he's the best. I really, really Is like it him still? Do you think you're still in the honeymoon phase right now? It's hard to say, honestly. I really would like to think not. Because it's uh, we've gone through some stuff, and I've met his family, and it's just it's we seem like we're very just tightly bonded as adults and humans, which is really nice. It's not just uh, um, it's fresh and new and exciting. Like we've gone through stuff already. That's like uh, you can kind of feel that the freshness fading, and it's, I guess that's when it's kind of like the breaking point. Once that freshness and, and newness of relationship fades mm-hmm. and goes into the realness of like this person is then your friend for as much as you want 
to be a friend for <laughs> um, as long as you want. And that's, uh, that, I guess that, that's probably the breaking point. And we've kind of reached that and we passed it and I'm going to this, to this job in Bulgaria for the next month and a half. It's going to be our first full, fully, full break. And I've always said at that point, like I want... Oh, he's, he's coming with you to Bulgaria? No, no. so he's, he's going to be in Jersey. So oh, you said a first, break. Okay, yeah, 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 first like break of not being together for a while. Uh-huh. And it's like, we always knew that, that that day was going to come, that I was going to do a job and I was going to go away for a bit. And it was always like, I wanted to set a really solid framework mm-hmm. for when I go away, it's not going to be like a, oh fuck, I hope this it reminds me of like strong. a Korean drama plot line, like <laughs> act, actor boyfriend flying across <laughs> yeah. the world. And then they're both in their bedrooms listening to sad music, doing like some type of artsy yeah, yeah, yeah. task. Like, they're both looking at the moon. He's looking, it's daytime for him, looking yeah. up at the sun. It's nighttime for him. i out of his yeah. skull. Like, wait, so you know what you're saying? Like you've been through them. You've been through some things that have sped up the relationship. Yeah. There are things that, you know, kind of speed things up. Living together, going on a trip. What are those? Are there things? What are the things that you think speed up a relationship and get you to know someone's true colors faster? Um, Good question. Yeah, it's a great question. Good I'm question. not sure if I know. Because I think with me and Jackson, it's our first kind of, like I said, real proper adult relationship. Uh-huh. We're really, but truly Real, real quick for the life. audience too. Can you say your age? Because I don't think we've said I'm 22. It. So young, <laughs> you're fucking. Oh my goodness! You're definitely an old guy. soul. I thought he was 24 this yeah. whole time. Actually, I'm a fucking shitty friend. I'm a young guy. <laughs> That's um, crazy. But yes, I mean, he, he just turned 22, so we're, we're both young guys. And he, uh, but like I said, we're kind of both learning along the way, which is nice. Like I don't have, I don't feel like I have any knowledge, relationship knowledge um, over him, and I don't think really he has any over me. We're we're both learning on the fly. I do know that honesty is fucking huge like as honest as i can be with him about everything that's happening and how that's making me feel and the only like rift that we've ever had is come out of me not kind of explaining something that i've been feeling like that's that's all it is oh which is good that i feel like you would this is their first time traveling together right yeah so this is we did uh went down to his uh family's place um in the jersey shore for like a little for a weekend but this is the first real trip we're out in la Tra- for the traveling first is probably the biggest answer your your thing i think yeah, living I think together so. over traveling that's why well 100 ex- traveling living is together. a good first measure traveling is the baby step into living yep. together yeah yeah so yeah, i, I want to so. know right dating a guy you've dated girls too right yeah very early on uh, I, I came out what, when i was 18. You came out when you were 18? 18, 18, yeah. And when did you, wait, when did you know that you were gay? Uh, my last girlfriend was when I was 17, so pretty late on. Oh, shit. Yeah. So you knew and then came yeah, out like right I think away. I knew around her. Okay. So, yeah. Who was the hardest person it was to come out to? Um, weirdly, the only person that kind of didn't uh, fully accept right away was uh, my best mate at the time. Really? Everyone else, like my whole family was chill. Uh, but we were kind of like, well, like those... Those friends who were really, really kind of growing and close, like uh, for lack of a better word, homoerotic <laughs> with each other, and I, I, cause I, so I can understand why they kind of <laughs> the questioning. He's of like, like, "You were slapping my ass, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you liked it. <laughs> we were spooning last night." <laughs> um, that's what that was. Yeah. Um, that's like if I ever came out to you, you'd really think about it. Like, yeah, yeah, right, whoa! Yeah. I'd be like, it makes sense. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. No, I guess so. I get that it, he came. He came around over time, though. I guess it was more the hardest person was it's gross myself. Ah, uh, right. I think that's uh, deep, super deep, right? So deep. He can't be twenty two. He can't no, be no, right, young guy. <laughs> um, but like I told my mom, I remember telling my mom she was one of the first person I uh, people I told, and I was uh, that was right after my best mate found out through something else. Uh, and then uh, I came home like crying and like laid, laid down in my bed. My mom was like, something must be happening. So she just like laid, laid next to me until I said it. And she, uh, I left, as soon as I said it, I went to the bathroom, like the laundry room down the hall. And I like, kept like, I was pacing back and forth and just saying, uh, I don't want to be, I don't want to be, I don't want to be. You don't want to be what? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh shit. Which is like the most movie thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I was, like, again, the biggest like. You were born so, for this shit. So up myself, like the most dramatic <laughs> at that point in time. He was born for the screen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Head in hand. His life, he's practicing while he's like yeah. coming out. Like. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so that was probably, yeah, I guess the hardest was, was that. But then as soon as I started, like that was about six months before I moved to LA and LA is the gayest place on earth. So. <laughs> It was lovely. I felt do you, like do you I think was, LA actually is the gayest place? I think place so. Dude, uh, yeah. Have course. you ever been to like Portland though? I've heard Portland's I pretty guess gay. Not. No, I've never really been anywhere else. Yeah, uh, the, yeah. The, Wait, the gayest place I've been to. So, yeah. so what's the what's the 
the build up to figuring out you're gay, right? You're like, wait, I don't like this doesn't mm-hmm. feel right. Uh, like that guy's kind of cute, but like, yeah, wait, did you did you uh, have sex with any of the girls you dated? Mm. First off, yeah, and I hope my mom's watching this. <laughs> um, <laughs> we'll send her this yeah, clip yeah, specifically. Uh, not with the the girl that I uh, I was with. I only dated two girls. Uh-huh. Um, the girl that I was with when I kind of realized we never did anything. Uh. But uh, early on, I was dating a girl uh, when I was like fourteen, and we kind of fooled around. But it was nothing that nothing that I enjoyed. Mm. That was the biggest thing. I realized I was like, it should be kind of better. Yeah. yeah, and I thought I just didn't like sex for a long time. <laughs> No, and then I started doing it with the right person. I was like, oh, shit. Oh, this is pretty hype. Oh, damn. All right. <laughs> That's funny. Wait, but I'd be curious of like, you know, obviously a female and a male dynamic is very different, right? It's just hard to under... We, we just are biologically different, chemically yeah. different. Dating a guy, mm. we th- guys think alike. Is it, would you say it's easier or harder? Yeah, I guess I've, I mean, to me, because... I'm gay. It's easier. <laughs> it's easier. Yeah, no, it's hard to know, though. I mean, it's like I think no matter what, it's finding the person that you uh, connect with the most, no matter what the gender is, right? It's the. Um, I think it's obviously possible for a, a man and a woman to be uh, infatuated with each other and, and love each other as much as possible. I think it maybe it takes less effort for for two guys and or two girls to to be together or two non-binaries. Like I think it's. I don't know. I don't know if that's a question I can answer. With my skill set. Yeah, I was about to say, that that makes, obviously it would feel way easier dating what you feel like you need to be dating, so. I think that's what it comes down to, right? I feel like I can count, like, the major, like, you're in the top ten of, like, Australian actors, right? Um, I don't know about. Okay, Mar- Margot Robbie, Russell Crowe. Margot Robbie's Australian? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's why, that's why she's so that's fine. That's why she's so fine. She's fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Russell so Crowe, fine. the Hemsworth. He's like, she's so fine? She's so hot? <laughs> yeah, so hot, she's so hot. I guess so. I'm there, I'm there, I'm there. I'm there. <laughs> if you say I'm so. I'm the same as you guys. <laughs> Uh, the wait, Hemsworths, the, the Hemsworths, All three Hemsworths. Oh, wait, there's a third actor. Hemsworth. There's a, I guess. Nah, nah, nah. No, there's two Hemsworths. Count. Yeah, we're counting uh, the important Tom, ones. Tom, Tom Holland. He's, he's not British. British. He's not British. 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 Yeah. Oh, he's British. Um, uh, Hugh Jackman. Hugh Jackman. Short five. Uh, what's his Nick face? Nick Hamilton. Uh, Carl Urban. Is he? Is he Australian? Carl Urban is a uh, New Zealander, I believe. Okay. Kiwi. Yeah, he's like, yeah, we, we don't like, we don't count him. We don't, ta- we don't count him. We don't count Taika. Taika, like, Taika is uh, New Zealand. Okay. Um, I guess, yeah, maybe. Yeah, and then Nick Hamilton, number six on the list. <laughs> I don't know Nick about Hamilton. Hey, hey, yeah, baby. Is, top 10. Top 10 Australian actors and coming in, number six, Nick Hamilton. I'll take it. I'll take it. That's list scientific. done by Under the Influence Podcast. Wow, no that's credentials. That was you're, scientific. You're, that was. you're number six on the list. I don't think I'm number six, but I think, we're missing, I think we're missing a few. I think people are <laughs> yelling you, names. If, you can't, right if now. you can't name them right now, then they don't exist. They don't exist. Yeah. Um, there's a few that are like busier than I am. I don't know if they're more sick. No, like, we're talking uh, like about famous. big size. We're also like, I guess, cultural impact. I guess Australian TikTokers, I'll take that. Top three. Oh, yeah. Wait, do what? who are some Australian TikTokers? I don't really know many. Right? I don't know a single one. I'll take it. And you live in America too, so you're like Australian American. I've always kind of counted myself as more of uh, an American citizen than I am an Australian citizen. Like I, uh, I can't vote because uh, I'm not a citizen. Mm-hmm. I have a, a visa. I've got my green card approved and stuff. But that's mm-hmm. like all takes years. Yeah, it takes yeah. years. But uh, I count myself as more of a contributor to American society than I yeah. do Australian. You've probably paid way more taxes over here. Oh, mate, I don't pay a cent in Australian taxes. <laughs> I pay too much here. Well, I don't would, get to vote for anything. What, yeah, what would it take for you to get a citizenship? Are you even trying? So I have to get my green card, which is, it's a whole boring yeah. legal process that I've been approved for a green card. It takes years and years and years to get that. Then once I've had that for five years, I can be a citizen. Dude, Dude I want to visit Australia so bad. It's yeah. pretty. It's very pretty. Uh, so, you, so, you know, this probably doesn't matter to you at all, uh-huh. but there is a big stereotype. Australian women are the finest in the world. So uh, every yeah. every day he'll hit me up, just be like, "Hey, Aust- Australia, like we gotta get out there." It's no, like affirmations. Instagram, pretty, Instagram, yeah. be serving on my explore page. They just serve me like really hot girls, and I click on them, and all of them are like every single Brisbane, time. Brisbane, Melbourne, Sydney, and I'm like, well, "There's a pattern." They are showing here. you the hottest of the hottest. No, but we have a lot of and they're all but from for, Australia. For them though. to all be from Australia, yeah, I guess is you're right. a very. We have strange. a big modeling community. I know wow. that. Like. Uh, um, yeah, I guess so. I mean, we're all very pretty. Like LA, though. I mean, you, you're LA has LA, beautiful LA has women, beautiful too, yeah. just people. Uh, wait, wait, wait. What city have you been in that has the best looking dudes, in your opinion? You know, New York is kind of the town of like the lanky. Mm-hmm. Like, there's like <laughs> the if, you, if, if you're in, if you're down to like really like tall, handsome fellas, uh-huh. then sure. 
Um, Cause New York is like such a fashion capital. There's yeah. a lot of fashion people. LA is like, if you want uh, a kind of uh, a hot douchebag in sweats, <laughs> sweats and a baseball cap kind of, that's, that's, then you're going to move to LA kind of thing. I don't know. I don't know. Look, I'm in it for the heart and the soul. You know what I mean? <laughs> And the brain. We see, we see his boyfriend. He's just a stud. Yeah. 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 Gray sweatpants. Yeah. 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 Gray sweatpants, baseball cap. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Wait, is he a burly boy? No, no. We're okay. both. Uh, he's like a uh, just an inch shorter than me, but he's he's tanked. Like he's massive, big titties. Oh my <laughs> word! Oh, biggest titties I've ever seen. So you still like titties? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, in a way. He's a fake. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, shit. Wait, how did? Uh, t- tell us about how you and your your, your current boyfriend met. Hinge. 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 I've, it works. It works. I've weirdly never dated anyone in, uh, in the States that hasn't that we haven't met on a dating app. Mm. Uh, Jackson, we met on Hinge. Uh, the oh, other yeah. three guys that I dated here on Raya. Mm-hmm. Um, the oh, only reason I wasn't on Raya. For, can, can you give me a recommendation for Raya? Can you slide Yeah, I can do that. I don't think I'm, no, I'm not on it anymore. Oh, you're not? No. Oh, yeah, you're right. Open that login and help us yeah, out. Yeah, Send right. us I'll the explain it to you. I have to I'll pay explain. the annual fee first. I'll, yeah. I'll pay that annual fee now. That's too much. I know you should just get his old login and change it <laughs> to WooTalk. And then they, yeah. no, they just, I'm, the, I'm just named Nick Hamilton while I was just pictures of me. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, Hinge is good, though. Hinge is like the, the, the best regular person one, I think. Okay. I think Rye is too much now. I, uh, I all thought about it. When I moved to New York, I was like, I'm going to get back into the scene. I thought about redownloading Raya, and I saw the the annual fee, and it's fucking ridiculous. Wait, what is the annual fee? I think fee? it's like 130 nowadays. Oh shit! Yeah, it's like 150. Uh, 150 to find love. This guy, I mean, cheap I mean, motherfucker. Cheap mother- Tinder Tinder Gold is more expensive than that. I, I would is think. it? I think so. What is what does Tinder Gold get you? I've never been on Tinder. Well, I know if you only buy the one month, it's like twenty dollars, and you get to see who likes you and blah blah blah. But it's like it's not I worth mean, it. On Hinge, you get to see who likes you. Exactly, so you get to see them right away. It's free, but you only get like five swipes or something like that a day. No. It's like it's a how many swipes? Hinge, the hinge is like there's I don't think there's really any bad parts about hinge. No, I, I've like ran out of swipes on hinge. Have you? Yeah. Well, maybe you're, maybe you're just too intense, you know. <laughs> I'm just super low. You're just, yeah. you're just <laughs> calling, you're calling yourself out. <laughs> yeah. We're, we're going to yeah. cut that part. We're going to cut that part. <laughs> Wait, what? What would you say is the the biggest pros of dating a guy? Um, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if I can answer that because I I would only want to. You know what I mean? Yeah, there's no comparison for him. No, I mean, uh, yeah, no. It's uh, I guess I guess it's like knowing each other's bodies in a weird way. Yeah, like that that feels right. But I guess it only takes a few times to to if you're with a the opposite sex mm-hmm. to understand what they like. Right. Neither of us have still found the clit. Well, it's very difficult. Neither of us. So <laughs> yeah. we're, all there. we're all there. Wait. Okay. So another dating question. Mm. If you so since you guys are you know you guys uh, both like. Guys, like, if you see, is it like, do you do you get jealous if your boyfriend is checking out another dude, or are you guys both like, you know? Is I that mean, your I guess type? it's the exact same, right? It's yeah. the same as like, uh, I guess the difference is that because we both like the same sex, uh-huh. we can both comment on someone else's attractiveness and kind of both get it. Mm-hmm. Um, no, I guess it's, but I guess it's the same as like, uh, if your girlfriend kind of saw a guy and was hot like it, it is like it's a bit of a, it's a jarring thing but it, you know if that's the uh if you understand that the, there's no chance that he's gonna mm. touch the man with his penis <laughs> <laughs> then i'm set <laughs> i mean i i agree with that it all comes down to trust like when i'm dating yeah, right? a girl i usually have no problem being like you know what i mean like i don't care if she's like that guy's good looking because i'll be like that guy i'll point it out first i'm like that's a good looking sure, man. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah or like that and then but i've had a girlfriend where like I one time it was a fucking cartoon character. We were watching an anime. I was like, she's hot, and we it was a fight. Really? Yeah, we were fighting. Like, and then that cartoon. Yeah, yeah, and I was like, she's not real. What do you mean? And then, and then I was just like, holy fuck! Because then my girlfriend before that, it was very much of that type of relationship where I was so I felt so fine with her. Just pointing out any hot girl, she would point them out. I'd point out dudes, be like, "You right. think that guy's hot? He's pretty hot." Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then like, but like with this girl, I, I just different. felt afraid yeah. to even look. That's a shame. Yeah. Okay, so I have TikTok questions now. Ask me TikTok questions. All right. Uh, favorite Asian bartending TikToker? <laughs> oh, fuck. Give me a top three. I don't know. So there's that, like, what? Oh, fucking forget his name. The fucking... Science. The, the, yeah, something... The some physics. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Alcohol Cocktail physics. biology. Cocktail, Cocktail biology. Something like that. Science cock like guy. I think he's fine. Yeah. yeah. I know what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 It's kind of corny, but, you know. Mm-hmm. I feel yeah. like he fell off. 
Yeah. It was good for a while, but yeah. I think back he's in like twenty twenty, March yeah. twenty twenty, that yeah. was the only time. Yeah, I think yeah. he has like a lot of follow. I don't know how he has yeah. a, like a bunch of. Yeah, he probably bought him to be honest with you. Yeah, probably Seems fucking loser. <laughs> probably. All right, anyways, let me ask a real question before my feelings get hurt. Uh, <laughs> well, <laughs> dream, shut the fuck up. <laughs> dream TikTok collabs. Give me like three or four. Oh, dude, you know I've always wanted to. So Hank Green is like a mutual friend mm-hmm. through a few friends uh, in LA. And uh, I know he knows what I do. Mm-hmm. And I'd love to fucking like uh, get on his shit. Uh, Wait, who's Hank Green? That sounds super familiar. The He's scientist pretty, guy. Yeah, he he like uh, him and John Green explains shit. Okay. Yeah. Uh, like like YouTube royalty started VidCon. That's how I yes. know him. Yeah. 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 Okay. Wow. Um, I guess yeah, like Hank Green, all the alcohol. Like you see that old guy? I think I showed you the old guy. Milkshake guy, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Exactly. Milkshake guy. I need to, the white elephant, I think, is his. He, the, he's a like like literal grandfather old like age man. Yeah. Makes milkshakes. like this Makes cute, cocktails. Yeah, cocktails. And just happy as fuck. The loveliest dude. Canadian. Shit. Like the yeah, loveliest dude. dude. And he like, every time he comments on like my videos, it's always the sweetest like, mm-hmm. love the editing on this one. It's so <laughs> cute. I love it so much. He's the best. Um... Yeah, I guess like I just want to like be. Uh, we're kind of already both in that community of the like the mixology community, mm-hmm. uh, and like join Jules. I love. We, we're going to work together soon. The guy who does uh, leaves stuff in jars for a week. Oh and yeah, sees yeah, what yeah. happens. Yeah. We've talked a few times, and he's going to try and uh, when I get back to Jersey, he's going to try and ship a jar to me, and I can open it and make mm-hmm. a drink with, with what he's done. Mm-hmm. Um, Ryan Durka, that's his name. Um, yeah, it's cra- so many. that guy specifically is crazy because he's so big. And all he does is leave stuff in a jar for a week. Sometimes months. In alcohol? Uh, al- mainly alcohol, alcohol, mainly alcohol, but like a, anything. Like uh, He did some weird shit. Like, he, uh, he does like he, pretty much anything in anything for yeah. a week. And, and then he drinks it? Yeah, yeah he'll try it. Yeah. So he, uh, cause I, he, we followed each other and then I, uh, I DM'd him. Um, and he was like, uh, like I, yeah, I love your videos. And I was like, I love your videos. Just next time, because when he, he does it, he, does, he tastes what he left in there. If it's still in there, he like, tastes that. And then uh, he also pours a shot of the th- of the liquid and drinks it. But whenever he pours the shot, he doesn't strain it out. So some of the the, the bits get in it. I was like, just next time, just fucking put it through a coffee filter for fuck's sake. <laughs> <laughs> so we did one video where he put it through the coffee filter, uh, and that was nice. But I wanted to just, like to to do one and then ship me okay. somehow from Canada to because he's in Saskatchewan. Oh, he's Canadian uh, to to New York and and uh, and we'll do something then. That'd be fun. Hold up, I got a question for you two. Uh, mm. What's up with people from New Jersey claiming they're from New York? Fuck. I don't know, it's super fucking lame. It's so fucking corny. Yeah, I mean, God. I feel like you... It's nice water. <laughs> <laughs> it's good. Um, look, honestly... Listen, honestly, you, you just have to own it, Nick. Honestly, We're closer dude, to New York fuck. than that motherfucker. Hey, you claim New York, too. This is a call out to both of you. I was, yeah. I was trying to deflect it. He, he exposed <laughs> us. Yeah, fuck. I always kind of... Uh, I used to say, I always used to say New York for like the first three, four months I was there. And then I realized how much, because uh, only people in New York hate Jersey, I think. Yeah, they hate oh, it. really? Yeah, and they hate like the, if you say that you live in Jersey City, they're like, oh, I'm never going to see your apartment ever. Yeah, yeah they'll literally just start talking shit to you right well, away. Why yeah, don't yeah, you but just go to Brooklyn Jersey. every night of the week? Yeah. Fuck off. Because, because <laughs> the only thing about Jersey is, is that if you're not from the New York, New Jersey area, you don't know what Jersey City, Hoboken, Fort Lee no. is. Like, you don't know that Guarantee that is you. more like the New Yorkers. You think of, like, Jersey Shore <laughs> or, like, Bumblefuck, New Jersey with, like, weird, smelly people. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you or, guys like, both fit those Italian vibes Princeton Princeton a little bit. Or, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. They're more like you than you us. You guys both fit that vibe. Of, uh, no, they're definitely they're more gorgeous. like you. <laughs> Just look at you. That, this is what New Jersey looks like. This is kind of New Jersey. Yeah. If yeah, I like saw you walking on the street in New Jersey looking tired, I wouldn't even fucking I should help that man. Look at this guy. I like it. I like yeah, the fit. Yeah. Thank you. That's good shit. You. And the new haircut. Thank That's, you. Thank I, you. Yeah, I yeah, like yeah. it. This uh, was this is, most, a, this is just a New Jersey circle jerk. I walked <laughs> yeah. into a trap. Here. We gotta stick go. together. Yeah, yeah, people like yeah, you. What was I trying to do? Trying to trying to attack you guys? Yeah, right. <laughs> I think only people in New York hate uh, yeah. Jerseyans. Well, and, and no, uh, everyone majority, everyone else in America people. just join in. They're like, oh yeah, yeah, hi Jersey. But fucking Brooklyn is further, if not. So it's as far away, if not further, from Manhattan than Jersey City is. Yep. Really? Guarantee you. And Jersey City is closer to the important parts of uh, Manhattan. Absolutely. And Brooklyn is more expensive, shittier to live in. Fucking like it's awful. just it, it's it's literally, yeah, it's whack. Wait, like, where you live is closer to Manhattan yeah. than Brooklyn. Yeah. I'm a little what, where he like, lives is closer I'm, to I'm the, the to the literal right there of like the the center of Manhattan that everyone I'm like goes right on the to. Hudson. Yeah. 
I'm also oh. right on the river, but I'm up by the north part of Manhattan where mm. it's like kind of the hood. So like low key, I gotta drive down a little bit after I get in it. Damn, I did not know that. But it's so like it's half close. the price of the city. I see the city. No one in the city can see exactly. The city. No one has I that have view. A view. And that and that ma- that on. man right there pointing him out. He lived in Queens, Flushing. He's basically Long Island. Mate, that Flushing shit, is so bro, far away. He would have to get on a train for like an hour yeah, to, get to get to get Manhattan. To Manhattan. I'm in there in twenty minutes. Yeah, yeah, easy. I feel like over time uh, it'll improve and people will start. Like it sounds great. I mean, if it You're hasn't already, it, it's already begun. Where the like the since the like I moved to Fort Lee when I was like, uh, what, how old was I? Twelve, mm. and then um, you know, and then I left when I was twenty six. So f- over fourteen years, I watched Fort Lee go from like this super just regular suburban Jersey town to like metropolitan, like yeah. it like high rise buildings, yeah. like club lounge restaurants. You know, what wow. I mean? So yeah. it's like blown up because all the money in the city is spilling out. They're realizing why the fuck would I live in the city when I could live here? I mean, you should have cop some property. Yeah. Half the price. You can have fucking land or like a fat, nice apartment mm-hmm. in a luxury building for the price of like a shoebox. In Literally, even Brooklyn. So yeah. You yeah. sold, you guys sold me, but you guys should start claiming it. Nah, because here's the thing. The only reason we don't claim is because we're like, we identify with the part of New Jersey that revolves around the economy of New York City. Like, sure. when we say New Jersey, you, th- you don't yeah, think no, of no, what, you what think we're deep saying. Jersey. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. think of fucking, you know, cows, I back, feel like. Back to, the tic- <laughs> back to the TikTok thing, right? Like, you did you know your angle was going to be bartending and you knew all the algorithm rules or you were just like, no. I'm just going to start making drinks? He was making a lot of other TikToks before the bartending stuff. I had about, from, from like my acting stuff, I had... I think 300k ish yeah. followers just from like making maybe some singing videos, some singing stuff, some like uh, comedy, like acting stuff, whatever. Um, mainly people would just like the main comments I would get was like, "Oh shit, this is Henry Bowers." <laughs> but um, it's crazy to me people recognize you, dude. Because I, yeah, until I mean, you told flattering. me, I looked it up. I was like, "Holy yeah. fuck!" It's cool to know though. It's like the it's the people kind of see past that disguise. Uh-huh. Um, and the age, like you're, you're like, yeah, I mean, I was, yeah, we shot them. when I was the first time when I was 16. So six years ago, fuck six years ago. It was an um, iconic movie though. I yeah. Know it was I'm glad. Man. I never, I, well, I only could watch parts of it. I'm, te- I can't do scary movies. <laughs> Dude, whatsoever I can't do scary movies. Cause my imagination takes it a thousand times. It's further. not like oh, super scary. It's, I know it's, it's, it's more so you, you I've, take, I rem- like you would take Pennywise and have a nightmare. That's a thousand percent times worse than the movie. Yes. I'd be walking late night in a parking lot alone and sprinting to my car. Be like, this is it. Pennywise is a fucking horrifying villain. Though. Horrifying. Horrifying. Yeah. yeah. One of the most horrifying of all time. Again, the highest grossing horror movie of all time. Yeah. Um, Over Blair Witch. Of Blair Witch. Wow. What is Blair Witch number two? 700. I don't know. I, I, no, we made 700 mil international. Fuck. Um, Question. You know, everyone's probably thinking you're set for life. What is... No. So that's the crazy <laughs> part to me, right? Like, at, at what stage of your acting career are you able to no- negotiate royalties? or Is that happening now in your career? Royalties are up front. It's just less of a cut. And, like, uh, it was... Uh, never, like, said this on a public forum, but it's like it was such a, a shame with my whole visa situation, we shot it in Canada and I was Australian. So I got to, when it came out in the U S my uh, kind of reps back then just were just like, you're going to be an it. This is a massive thing. We can just kind of sign the first deal that we were given. Uh, and it wasn't, didn't include U S royalties, which uh, if we shot in the U S it just would have been in the deal straight up. Uh-huh. Um, but because I was Australian shooting in Canada, I didn't, I don't get it. I don't get a cent from any of the, of it. What? Yeah. You could have come the U S royalties. You don't get I, a cent. I probably could have made a, I mean, twice as no, much as what you would would have, would have made from the other royalties, right? Then? I mean, I, I I I don't get any U.S. royalties. I don't. I get. I think I get Canadian and Australian. That's it. But you I get can't to, fight that. You can't go back. No, we signed it. that deal. That was the biggest thing. Like uh, what I've learned since I was that was I was sixteen. My mom was fairly new into it. My manager, at the, I mean, rightly probably too. Like if we had fought that at, at at any point, them hiring an Australian to play that role to fly over to Toronto and give us all the stuff that you have to give an actor at that point, like accommodation and a uh, car and all that. Like they spent a lot of money on us and they didn't have to. There's a, ch- there's a very large chance that if we even tried to counter once, they would have just dropped it and given it to someone else. Mm. And that would have, you know, I wouldn't have, I wouldn't be nearly as big as I am now, yeah. nearly as successful as I am now. <laughs> was that your biggest role so far? Uh, biggest movie, yeah. Biggest movie, so. rather, yeah. Um, this, uh, I'm very, very excited for this movie coming out this year. It's, 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 my biggest uh, kind of showcase of what I can do. Tell us the name again. It's called Brave the Dark. Brave it's the a Dark. True story. We shot it in the same town that it happened in. Uh, it's this kid who uh, was orphaned at a young age, went through the whole foster system, that ran, a, ran, ran away from his foster family when he was, I think he's 17, and uh, is living in his car when we, at the start of the movie. 
and um, gets into some trouble and his drama teacher took him under his wing. And uh, the whole movie is about their relationship and it's uh, the drama teacher is played by Jared Harris who uh, people might know from Chernobyl, The Crown. He's a really prestigious... Who do you play in Chernobyl? Uh, he played... The, the HBO series, right? Yeah. One of the scientists. Okay. Like the head scientist that like... Ooh, the whistleblower kind of thing. I think I remember. Um, he's just fen- a phenomenal actor and he's, he comes from a, a long line of actors and his brother directed it and it's just a... Again, with the song coming out, it's, it's something I haven't been so excited about for wow. a long time. Yeah. Yeah. Would you say this is... Well, this is obviously number one most excited project mm-hmm. that you're working on. Uh, what is... What would you say is kind of behind that? What else in your... Plethor- your yeah. Career. <laughs> Many pies. Yeah. Um, I've, like, I'm really excited about that. I'm really excited about the song to come out with that. Um, that should be my like kind of last quarter of this year. I'm about to shoot this movie in Bulgaria. That should be fun. Um, it's more, it's more along the lines of it, kind of thriller stuff. And then... Got a movie October, November um, that's more kind of prestigious along the lines of Brave the Dark um, that's in Oklahoma. Uh, this book that I just handed into my managers yesterday that is all done and we're trying to shop out to publishers right now is hopefully, uh, if we can get that out by the end of the year, that'd be a, a miracle, but it'd be awesome if we could. Crazy. Um, As in saying you finish your book, did, like, <clears throat> mm-hmm. does that include like taking and like collecting pictures of all the recipes and so, all that? Uh, the way we could have done it, so from from day dot, so I started my TikTok stuff in November, mm-hmm. started writing this in January, February. And I um, I remember thinking, because uh, our friend John Kung said, um, uh, he was like, he, he got a massive book deal from kind of from the start and he's writing a book under a lot of money. And that's, I, I think I could have done that, but then there would be a deadline on me and stuff. And I just kind of decided to do it all on my own. So uh, a lot of it is illustrations from my artist friends um it's 200 recipes uh just over 100 classic contemporary uh cocktails just under 100 of my uh creations uh some stories in a throughout that was the biggest thing i was like the amount of my viewers uh and commenters seem to not be drinkers or underage or whatever and i want them to or still want to buy the Find book. value in the book yeah and like and there's like some really good stories about uh my life and why i got into that and uh like it's, it's half biography, half cocktail. Why, why did you get into Ooh, it? I like that. Into drinks? Yeah. I started cooking when I was a kid. I was a massive, I really loved cooking. Um, I did, uh, my my biggest dream was to be a MasterChef Junior uh, <laughs> in Australia. And then uh, that kind of got eclipsed when I started acting. And I started, when the moment I started acting, that cockiness was paired with laziness. Um, I really became a person who didn't really want to put much work into anything. And uh, cooking is a bunch of work. It's a bunch of, like, the whole culinary world is a lot of, uh, takes a lot of time and energy and, and money to, to, to make meals and create meals. And alcohol, once I turned 18 in Australia, which is a legal drinking age, became, like, a, a thing I was so fascinated with. And it was like a, it's like a cooking beta. It's like being, uh, being able to, like... Uh, called you beta. <laughs> called you beta, Yeah. yeah. I'm both you're, not, you're not wrong. You're not We're wrong. Both better. The uh, it's yeah. It's able to do the same kind of uh, imaginatory things that you can do with with cooking, but on a much smaller scale. Like I, like I just said, my my favorite drink I've ever created is three ingredients stirred mm-hmm. over ice. Like it's super simple, but it's you can create these things that never, no one's ever created before, and you meet people that like. I guess it comes with anything. If you're really interested in something, and you find a community that is also interested in that thing, like. I don't think I've connected with somewhat with many people as quick as I have people like you, people like the Rondies, mm-hmm. uh, Jules from Join Jules, like people who just like, we just get it. We click. Same thing with actors. I, I kind of click with those people. It's just, it's, uh, it all just kind of makes sense. Um, and, and especially with alcohol and bartending stuff, like you don't meet so many people with the knowledge and even interest to mm. want to discuss those things. So no. once you do, it's like, it's like a, it's just finally you get to talk about something like that. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? Where you tell somebody like, oh, I made this thing and they just get it. They're like, mm-hmm. holy shit, that's a genius. Like, and then people appreciate you for what you've done. Yeah. Instead yeah, of right. just having to taste it to be like, oh, it's yeah, good. Yeah, it's like, oh, it's like, tasty, yeah. Yeah, yeah people like, couldn't give a shit. I was exactly. uh, at, at a party the other, when I left uh, Jersey to come here at uh-huh. like a farewell party. One of my friends, he was like, I don't really drink much, but like, I really want to like, want to see what you make. So I made him a drink. One of my favorite drinks I've ever made. Mm-hmm. Which is? Um... <laughs> It was a good one. <laughs> uh, it started with, I know it started with rye whiskey because I mean, at the moment I said, uh, 
yeah, it's like it's called this. It's got uh, it's rye whiskey, maraschino, and immediately he checked out it. He like looks at my other friend. He was like, eh, nothing. <laughs> I was like, okay, just fucking drink. He it. Even, like, <laughs> like most people don't even know what rye whiskey is, you know. And you uh, think that's I don't such know. Basic people don't know bourbon is whiskey. Exactly. So many people don't know bourbon is whiskey. And like scotch, like bre- they, people think brandy is whiskey, yeah. and they don't think bourbon is whiskey. And then it's like when. You, when you don't even know the basic things, it's like, all right, what's the point in what's explaining point to you the genius it? behind what I just fed you? <laughs> like the thought process, the years of expertise that went into making you this tasty sure. thing. It's like, oh, it tastes like ice cream. Like, no shit. It yeah, tastes yeah. fire. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, the moment you find like a bartender, like it was a di- I went to a, b- a dive bar two nights ago um, in Culver. And uh, there's this guy behind a bar who you'd never expect to work at a dive bar. And he has these incredible infusions behind the bar. It's just like, it's like, yeah, I'm always what, playing around. What was the bar? Yes. You don't remember? No. Um, We're, I'm noticing a pattern here. You don't I'm, have good memory. I know <laughs> what. How are you memorizing lines for a full movie? Uh, yeah, you can't different. remember your favorite different, cocktail. It's a different part of my brain, I guess. Yeah. Uh, it's the alcohol section of his brain, you know? Like, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a little bit affected at this point. Yeah. It's all rough. Um, but he was like, uh, he taught us all this stuff, and he was kind of really into it. And then uh, uh, one of my friends who doesn't really drink, he was like, uh, I don't know, like, what, what, what do you like to drink? And he was like, oh, I, I don't drink. At all? Yeah. Can you Which, trust him? You can. I know. Dude, his the, drinks were fire. The best bartender, the best mixologist I've met don't drink or drink very rarely. Have you been to Time Bar in New York City? Dude, you need to go. Mm. That shit is like a museum where like you're looking at like the Mona Lisa. Every cocktail that comes out, you're like, what the Shut fuck? Up. I swear. Because one, the glassware and presentation, everything is like a fucking engineering masterpiece. Cool. And then what the ingredients he uses, just it's like uh, in, even for the... The layman, like you could see that and be like, I just know this shit was hard as fuck to source. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, like like the like the wine he's using is from like you know this one specific region. It is just crazy. Sure. Like he makes everything from scratch. He makes his own huckleberry wine, like crazy yeah. shit like that. And wow. uh, and he's just an absolute genius. That guy doesn't drink. He's like some French monk. Wow. Yeah. How do you do it though? How do you taste? Yeah. Do you, do you taste? You rely he on taste other he, it's not that he doesn't drink. He doesn't really get drunk ever. So maybe that's what they. He mean. doesn't go drinking. Yeah. So they taste as long as they know what flavor. Because exactly, I guess yeah. when you say I don't drink at all, you you assume it's just I, like I wouldn't even I know enter what, my mouth. I know yeah. what this tastes like. And I know what this tastes like, and I'm sure it's fine together. Yeah. yeah. Which is not the case usually. Sometimes no. I have an idea in my mind and I put it no. together, and it's like whack. Oh, fuck. Yeah. <laughs> it's gone. My mind sucks. Who would you say are like the the top three who would you say are the top bartenders on tiktok answer carefully no. <laughs> <laughs> um honestly i think uh you and the rondies and really uh underappreciated is join jewels i think she used she used to have some really really strong views and like uh she used to do like the whole photography side and now she's what i really like is that uh that would never really incorporated her personality and she's just an awesome person mm-hmm. Now the stuff that she does now is more. She's talking to the camera. I think that's what that's. I think she realized that's what she was missing because Absolutely. like yeah. there's only there's only for so long that the aesthetic thing can go for. You know what I mean? Like yeah. it's like after I've seen it a hundred times, it's like yeah. all right. Even if the recipe is new, I, I'm no, gonna get the same. It's the same, same set. thing. Yeah. yeah. And I think yeah. She realized that, and she like her recipes she, are top tier. Yeah. Though. Is there really the good. same, you know, there's obviously a community in the chef community where they kind of look down on like people that became chefs on tiktok right they didn't go to the form through the formal training i guess you're better at answering this yeah is there the same kind of feeling with bartenders and tiktok bartenders yeah yeah, but here's the thing about uh professional bartenders they're they're all assholes right they're like very it's a a lot of not all but it's a very pretentious community for the most part sure so yeah they're like that but like they're kind of like that with a lot of people like um but overall the it's similar to the chef community where it's like there's people who take it very seriously and are clearly talented even if they've never worked behind a bar Mm -hmm. this man uh but then there's people that definitely like uh professional bartenders will be like like they just get mad watching their videos and you know no flack to them because i love their videos and they're my boys but the rondi specifically they don't measure shit. No, I, mean? no, and I then, know. And, and then free it and makes shit. it makes like other bartenders just fucking angry yeah. watching it. Yeah. Tipsy bartender, people hate him oh. because he's like he's just poor. His is just his videos are more fun to watch. It's more shock factor. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. it's like it's like epic meal time for bartending, yeah. right? Yeah. So it's yeah. like as a content creator, he's from, great from a bartending perspective. People are like, and I think it's 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 saltiness and jealousy to a little bit because yeah. the tipsy bartender is he's making twenty mega, million views a yeah. Video. yeah. It's yeah. like ridiculous how many views he gets. Even I'm like, bro, yeah. I, this cocktail actually tastes good. This is Everclear and juice. Yeah, legit. Like, what is going on? Dude, yeah. But but what's funny is he's also changing his style. Like now he's holding all the plastic. He's holding as many plastic handles. Yeah, as he's, he's can, like pouring it in, pouring them out. It's like, yeah. exactly. It's he's, the epic meal time of yeah. bartending. Yeah, it is. Yeah. It's dope. Still. 
for for what it is, you have to appreciate it for what it is. Yeah, it's got an audience. Has yeah, to. exactly. Yeah, but, but but I can barely remember lines to make like a thirty second TikTok video. Hmm. What is the process to memorize an entire script for a movie? Honestly, I've as of next month, I've been doing this for exactly half of my life. Oh wow! So. I guess it's kind of just ingrained. Even at the start, though, I don't think it was. You know, it's still tough. I'm not like it's not like a, I read a page and it's in me. Yeah. Um, yeah. What is the what What's is the that process? process like? Like you're walking around repeating it over and over. Kinda. Yeah. I mean, that's that's a very classic process. I think I I've only recently started. Closer. Sorry. Over here now. <laughs> um, I've only recently started uh, highlighting my script in a certain color because uh -huh. then I've realized that like I I read lines. I'm easy, it's, they're easy to remember mm. for me for some reason. Um, and like having someone else be blue, it's it's easy to kind of put yeah. them away. I don't know why. Um, but no, it that really makes is, a lot of sense actually. Yeah, I guess like color, uh, recognition or whatever. But um, being able to just kind of stand up and walk around and, and say them until you, you miss a line. Yeah, but mm. that's like a movie is probably, you guys shoot two hours worth yeah. of converse, like a two hours. Well, of movies are... A lot easier. Auditions really? are tough. Auditions are harder than movies because you don't know the 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 content at the at the point that you've that you are up to shooting the movie. You've read that script three four times, possibly more. Three four and, times. And then you're kind of shooting enough? it. You're kind of shooting no, it in sections, though, right? Yeah, like, and yeah. it's like you do three scenes a day, and you do by the time you do eight takes of one shot. By the two, by the time you got the three three the third take of that shot, you're it's there. Yeah. But, but so okay, full movie. You read the whole script. You try to memorize the entirety before no, no, you go to the first no, take no, set. No, 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 no. Not memorize it. I think it's a familiarizing. Yeah. Right? Well, yeah. you know the story. Yeah. At yeah. the very least, and you know the story, and then well, when, like you, said, when you get to set, I mean, you, you have the schedule from day from day one. You have the full schedule of the movie. Yeah. Uh, better actors than I will start. They have say they have a six day work week. They have a, a break on Sunday. They'll spend Sunday with their acting coach going through all the scenes of the next week. And like, not this guy's not, too talented. He's like, I strut on the scene at like 8 a.m. Monday. No. <laughs> he I drinks, nail he it. drinks Sunday lazy. night. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, I'm lazy as William. Uh, but like, it's, I think, uh, it's more you get there on the day and you're excited to do it. And you know the text, you know the story. By that point, once you've done three takes of that one scene, you're pretty set. It's pretty in your head. Are you ever like, you hit the scene, like you go through the day and you're like, Man, I wasn't reacting well, like to my character. I gotta call an acting coach in, or like, how are you tweaking to like? Because every day you reset, you fall Always asleep. Always tweaking. You... Yeah. Well, the difference is, is that when you uh, different difference between film and theater is you do theater. That's memorizing a whole script, like you said. That's fucking insane. I don't know if I could do that, but you do sometimes two shows a night for months. By the hundredth show. It is a part of you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And every time that the hundred shows before then, you get to change a little thing every time until you reach the perfect version of that show. Mm -hmm. And you don't get that with acting, with uh, with film and TV. You do a scene for, depending on the uh, the director, you do possibly four shots of a, of a scene, maybe four takes a, a shot. Uh, that's probably average. So you got 20 takes to do this scene and get it perfect in those 20 takes. And if your coverage is at the start, is like one of the first angles is your coverage, then you have to get it perfect, as perfect as you can in those four takes before they move on. And, you know, the best directors will keep you go let you keep going until you find something that you're happy with, but sometimes you just don't have the money all the time. So when mm. you're sitting there and he's like, okay, take one, take two, take three, yeah. are you getting a chance to run back to the monitor to quickly look if you Yeah, want? sometimes. It'll, okay. Again... It depends on money and time. Like some people, some Damn. some blockbusters will ab are able to do a scene a day. It's a, crazy. Scene a, day. a scene a day, one scene. And how long is one scene on the final production? Like ten minutes, one minute. Uh, all depends. Depends. It depends on the scene. Usually, like yeah, maybe like a like a three minute scene. You could do. Uh, I'd I'd say on like a blockbuster where you have all the money in the world, something like a Marvel movie, where not only are the scenes uh, kind of just you and this other guy or other person acting against you. You've got the blue screen behind you. That all the camera angles, all the lighting has to be right. All this, this because be stunts in the scene. Mm -hmm. When you're shooting a more prestige thing, like Brave the Dark, there's nothing but kind of you guys that you have to focus on. Everything's set when you walk on on set. Uh, and it really relies on the acting then. Yeah, really. It's like one, at that point, you can do five scenes a day because as long as you have half talented people in front of the camera, hopefully they're they're going to be able to get to that point 
at least a point that they're happy with, maybe not the perfect point, the point that they're happy with before you uh, are comfortable moving on. God, that must be tough if you're shooting some kind of really emotional scene. Then you like take a break and you're shooting the shit on the side, and then you got to come back into that character. Yeah. Do you like yeah. remain in mindset? Do you yeah. like try to avoid uh, changing out of your 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 headspace? I don't know. I guess it's people do that. People definitely stay in it and don't like people to talk to them in between takes because I get that. You just want to, especially if it's really emotional. Um, I don't know. I I almost feel like it's a nice break. I'm I'm very lucky, I guess, that I can. I feel like I can move into it possibly quicker than than others. I uh, I really like being keeping it in that moment, and then once I'm out, I can fuck around and have fun. Um, Man, this seems yeah. so hard. I yeah, don't think acting, I can, acting, acting. I don't know about it hard. It's a, that's the thing. I think all I'm talking about now is stuff I've gained over the years, and I'm very lucky to be able to do what I do for the amount of money that I do it for. <laughs> um, but as hard as it is. It's not as hard as so many other things. Is TikTok helping your acting career because it's just building more eyeballs on you? It hasn't uh, actualized itself, but I can't imagine it's hurting. Like uh, the biggest thing I told my agent, like obviously it's 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 probably worrying to see uh, me taking so much time to do the TikTok stuff and go. When I send you auditions, are you actually focusing on them or are you focusing more on your next drink video? I told him, I was like, for this job especially, I'm headed off to Europe for a month and a half. I block shoot it, shot like 25 videos before I left to put out in the next month and a half. So I don't have to focus on it at all. I can focus on the acting and uh, kind of comforting those people around me that uh, have been with me for years and years and years. So I'm not like letting go of acting because I still love acting a lot. Yeah. I feel like your time management skills are like out of this world to be writing a book, to write music. Out of here. <laughs> yeah, to write a script. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, I'm just very impressed. Like, is your daily routine, like, are you, are you like, regimented? You have to be regimented as hell to do what yeah, you yeah, do. Yeah, pretty much so. I, I'm a very organized individual. Like, I'll, I'm Have you been to his place? Very oh, clean, mate. very OCD, nice and neat. Everyone who's gone to my place, just, yeah. there's a, a, a spot for everything. I don't have any roommates. No one moves shit. I move shit. Is that, you know? is that like, was that like your parents drilled that into you early on? Or you no, not really. I don't up? think so. I mean, we were always in a very kind of clean uh, environment and very kind of laid back and, and chill and, and, you know, you keep your place in order. But uh, no, I've, I've always been a bit of a control freak in every sense of the word, like with uh, my career, wanting to have a hand in pretty much everything I do. That's why like, I have so my, my hand in so many pies, my, finger, my thumbs in so many pies. I've got like, I can't not really be doing something myself. I, f I feel like you've turned all your hobbies into careers. Yeah. What's something you like to do when the camera's off? Dude, honestly, not much. I like, I, Drink. yeah. Yeah. But that's now my job, so what the <laughs> fuck? Um, I like, uh, like I love, I love music. I love singing. I love songwriting. I love films. I love uh, mixology. I like cooking, but that's like the, maybe that's the one time where I don't record anything is when I'm like in my kitchen. But nowadays, because I've got so much going on, it's like all just like Hello Fresh, like stuff that I don't really have to think about. I just kind of, I do when I'm, and that's done. What would you say this? Sorry, the last question. We, we can wrap up. Yeah, you fucking hogging up all the questions. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> um, what would you say is a couple qualities about yourself that you know you're like rock solid on? Twenty two years old. Um, I'd like to think my organizational skills are pretty on point, but I know that like I'm too controlling sometimes. I know that like I have a good sense of humor. And but it's only really when I'm around the right people. I think every every part of my life and every kind of portion of my being can be improved in some way. There's not really anything that I'm rock solid on, which is possibly a thing that uh, Jackson's been helping me with. Like it's having someone around who realizes that, like you know, you are sometimes you're hot shit. Yeah, you should know that you're hot shit sometimes, and that's nice to hear. Uh, Bring seventeen year old Nick back. Exactly. Yeah, just big head. That's all it is. Yeah. Just cocky boy. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. You, you need a mix of both, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. you ha to, to keep making it far, you really have to believe you are the fucking man at yeah. all times. Absolutely. But then if you let that leak into, like, the way you treat people or, like, blah, 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 yeah. then that's when it becomes negative. But Yeah, absolutely. I'm, yeah. I'm confident that I'm, I'm good at what I do. Okay. And that's uh, it. If you're comfortable sharing, I have the question. I'm, I've always been curious how much you would make from a movie like It, let's say. Like, so if you're comfortable sharing, what is a check yeah, I mean, like it's that tough, like, because I've... 
been growing throughout that. Mm -hmm. Like, I honestly don't remember what my paycheck was for the first hit or the second hit because mm -hmm. it was. I know the second hit was a lot more because we made bank on the first one. Mm -hmm. um, and that's box office bonuses. It's really hard to. <coughs> Sorry, excuse me. COVID. Um, I don't. Like no, I don't. Let me test it. Let me test it. I'm fine. <laughs> just, um, yeah. uh, it's it's like I'd say average 200k a movie. Oh wow. Um, but that's like your taxed like a motherfucker yeah, and imagine. your commissions for your team are ridiculous it's like you've that's why i think what's why actors gets paid so much and it's all popper sizes like robert downey jr made 10 million dollars for this movie but he lost probably 7 million of it in Jeez. taxes and commissions and all of his team and stuff so it's like Fuck. it's like uh I think that's why we get paid so much because yeah. so much goes to you know you're not getting paid your company is getting paid and, and that movie takes you how stuff. long um this one when i'm shooting We'll take uh, a month of actual shooting, mm -hmm. um, end of July, end of August. Uh, some take fifteen days. Like the 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 lowest you can really go for a feature without it getting crunchy, crunchy is eighteen days mm -hmm. shooting. Um, we did twenty for Brave the Dark, but something like uh, the director of it too just finished the Flash, and that's over COVID, obviously too, but. Um, I think actual shooting that took about six to nine months. Wait, the Flash. <laughs> yeah, I was just a to say. Ezra, Ezra Miller, do you have any opinions on this man? Hey, single, <laughs> hey, single handedly marketing the shit out of that movie. Do you, wait, do you, uh, do you know DC at all? Yeah. So do you know like re Reverse Flash? Yeah. Ezra Miller is like perfect for Reverse Flash. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like in real life, so which is Reverse Flash is like the biggest menace in comic book history. And uh, Ezra Miller, I just seen a TikTok of him of a fan taking a video with him. He's like, oh, dude, I'm so nervous. He's like, oh, yeah. He's like, I could knock you out if you want. And he's like, what? And he's <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, he's yeah. like, yeah, I just offer this to everyone who's nervous around me. He's like, I'll just fucking knock you out. And the kid's like, uh -huh. <laughs> And then it like cuts. <laughs> yeah, and then the video just ends because it's like, he's just threatening to knock out this like little boy. He's, fuck, he's a man. Yeah, yeah. he's, he's mentally ill. Dude, like, I mean, I don't know how he's not in jail. Apparently, Austin Butler punched him in the face in a bar. In yeah, Tokyo. that was proven wrong. Was oh, proven that was not true? Yeah, that was false. I was really hoping that was thumbnails, true. man. <laughs> Fucking hate these Clickbait. thumbnails. Clickbait. Um, another another financial question. What what is like? So now you do the movie thing, mm -hmm. and but now you also separately have this TikTok career going mm -hmm. on. What is like the? What's like a bigger brand deal for you? Um, what do those look like? I mean, they're pretty. They're lucrative. I'll uh -huh. say that. I think it's. Uh, lucky with this like uh, batch shooting these videos mm -hmm. for this next Europe trip kind of able to go to all the brands that I've worked with and go on like, if you want to work with me for the next month and a half, do it now. Because mm -hmm. then I'll put it out, out the video in the next month and a half. It's a fair amount of companies get, kind of go, all right, really? money here. They're like, oh, wow, yeah, that's, that's fire. Nice. That's a good um, idea. Yeah. I'm going to go away just from do that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I mean, I just, I truly, and it's just such a cliche thing to say, I really just enjoy a lot of it. And that's why I guess like, the hobbies turning into a careers thing is I'm so lucky to be able to do a job that I enjoy and not only a job, but three jobs, four jobs, five jobs that I really, really enjoy doing. Um, and that they're pretty lucrative financially. And that's like, I'm able to do these trips to LA and, and see people across the country and, and, and witness things that I wouldn't be able to witness if I wasn't in this field. Like I, I'm, like I said, if I hadn't have done it at 16, if we'd gone back with one counter, cause I, we got a bit cocky and we we're like, Oh, if they want me, then they want me. And they cast anyone else. I don't know where I'd be. I could, I could be. That's easily the biggest thing that's happened to me so far and why I was able to go to LA, why I was able to get the jobs that financially supported me to go to LA, why I was able to stay in LA during COVID and uh, move to New York and everything's just a, it's a, a snowball, right? It's, I'm, I'm very lucky to be able to to have start, started where I started to get where I am now. Mm -hmm. yeah. there, there's definitely luck, but uh, you also are just so multi-talented, also hardworking. Like, I, I think you've that. created your own luck. That's very nice. Absolutely. Uh, to wrap it up, mm. this is uh, a bit of a, a cheeky question. Cheeky. Cheeky. Uh, <laughs> does, does size matter no. what, for gay men? No. No? No, God, no. I think... Is there a preferred size range? There's obviously a preferred size range. Mm -hmm. I think the thing is when it comes to uh, gay sex in general, mm -hmm. if we're going to go there... <laughs> uh, it's very... Well, like I a, mean, we were there already. Right. Right. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Yeah. You're right. Uh, it's... Um, there are limits to what a body can handle, <laughs> to what a body can handle. You know what okay, I mean? Yeah, yeah. With females, there's less of a limit, I'd yeah, say. Yeah, yeah. Then they push babies out of there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah it's, it, can, it can it can stretch, <laughs> less stretch in, in us men. Um, 
So it's obviously like a preferred. I think size matters in the way that you wouldn't want it to be be too big. Okay. And that's Ooh, okay. that's a message to all those boys out there. Yep. <laughs> There's hope. Yourself. There's hope for all of you. There's hope. Um, all right. Well, last one, actually, I want to know this personally. Uh, do you want children, children one day? Yeah, absolutely. And yeah. Uh, in your opinion, after having lived the child child actor's life, mm -hmm. I think you've came come out obviously more than fine. But mm -hmm. would you want them to be an actor? That's I've never thought about that. I really don't know. You want them to be a TikTok bartender? Yeah, come on exactly. now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Making cocktails at like six. Like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, I I know that I was very lucky to get where I am now with what I've done. I think abnormally lucky. I think it's such a cruel, cruel industry that will knock you down so much. Mm. That uh, I think the moment you think that that's regular for everyone is the moment you're, you're done for. So I think if they want to pursue it, sure. If they don't and they want to do a, a regular person job, like uh, my boyfriend really couldn't, think of anything worse than being in the spotlight really and uh he's just like the nicest person ever and just wants to cater to other people while also just kind of living his life and paying the bills and just just getting along it's cute as fuck uh and it's adorable and I, it's just the best <laughs> um <laughs> right uh so there's people like that and if if my kid's like that then great if if my kid wants to pursue it i think the biggest thing is setting those expectations like if by the time i have a kid i'm pretty successful setting those expectations of like you're not necessarily going to be exactly where i am <laughs> you're not gonna you could be higher you could be more you could be less until you said that it was like yeah yeah was, you, you're not gonna be like, as good as daddy all right yeah. you won't you won't make it here but it's all right <laughs> yeah yeah and that's fine yeah, yeah. have some fun yeah exactly <laughs> um yeah my last question mm -hmm. if you had to pick one of your many careers which one would you pick? Probably acting. I think. Acting. I, yeah. It started it all. Like I would really, it would make me really, really upset. So. But that means that you can never drink again. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> no, that's ruined my life. That's my weird, whole, yeah. my whole brain's gone. <laughs> He's Shit. really stopped to think about. It. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, That'd do you tough. think? Do you think that any of those careers would have gone further if you stuck with just one of them and put like? Ah, oh, fuck. Like, that's a. It's definitely a a thought that I've had. Like it's. I mean, your music is like actually genuinely good. I actually, what the fuck are we saying? He's twenty two. Yeah, you're also like, like you no, know, but I dude, see what you could. You could yeah, 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 with yeah. also how far you are in acting right now, you could do that shit for another five years. Like really get tired of it potentially, and, and then start under thirty. Start from nothing out of something else and be under thirty. Yeah, yeah. like sure. Yeah. No, I know. This I, man I, is like, thirty one. I don't know if you could tell. That doesn't. Yeah, you don't look twenty. Yeah, and yeah, you, you look. Yeah, you look like a cute little schoolgirl. That's great. I thought like you were 13 this whole time, yeah. You've been giving me alcohol this yeah, whole yeah. time. Fuck, I haven't been pouring it. I haven't been pouring it. an alcohol yeah. company at 17. Yeah, yeah. I haven't been pouring it. Yeah, I would go to jail. Don't, let's not say that. What the fuck is this? It's the last one. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I so. opened another one. I didn't want oh, to just wait, let wait, it wait, sit wait. there. Wait, 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 wait. No, there's one final question. Okay. Look at this camera. Please give our audience one piece of advice. Oh, fuck. A 22-year-old giving advice. You've accomplished enough to give advice. I don't know. I I, would say... Honesty is pretty key. I've always lived by the motto, and I'm not sure if it's a correct motto. I've always lived by the motto that you should give people the respect that they give you. Not, I think it, it goes against the grain of uh, give people the respect that you expect. I think treating people with kindness no matter what is pretty, can be detrimental. I think making yourself strong in going, if this person's treating me like shit, I sh shouldn't feel wrong to, to, to treat them like shit. And uh, I think that's probably where I still stand. I think there's probably some leeway like Jackson's teaching me, like sometimes kindness out of hatred is, is a good thing to do. Um, but, you know, I think, yeah, treating people with the respect that they treat you with, not letting people stamp over you and, 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 and trample you is pretty important. Listen to that one carefully, Wu Talk. Listen to that one very carefully. Nick Hamilton, everybody. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Cheers. Cheers. We're going to cut that. <laughs> They're going to cut that one out. No one, no one must misconstrue this relationship. I am the victim. Chin Chen. Holy shit, there's a lot of seltzer. Oh, my God. It's so spicy. That's a bubbly boy. Yeah, it's spicy. It's so spicy. That's a bubbly boy. <laughs> Oh, All right, we wait, gotta do the outro. Wait, I'm not done yet. We can, we gotta run the video till I'm done. Okay, keep uh, going. I'll be here.
There he is. There you go. I'm Nick Hamilton, and I'm under the influence. Cheerio. Cheerio. <laughs> Wait, that's our, that's British, right? Yeah, that's chin, chin, chin. Say sorry. Cheerio. I'm sorry. That was racially insensitive of me. Wow. You really got all the way to the end. I really like that you did that. But since you're here, might as well like and subscribe and leave a comment on who's got the nicer hair. We're also giving away $50 every week to the funniest review of our podcast. All you got to do is leave a review that'll make us giggle, screenshot it, and then text the number on the screen and you're automatically entered for a chance to win. Also, that's a real number. So you can just text us when you're lonely, you need a date to prom, or if you're looking for hot single moms in your area, text us. I'm Utak. I'm Jeremy. And, and we're, we're Under the Influence. Ah ha ha.